Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto, descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 13 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out uh, a fair amount of detail. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, it hasn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Now I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. All that we have accomplished in space, all that we may accomplish in days and years to come, we stand ready to share for the benefit of all mankind. As we explore the reaches of space, let us go to the new worlds together. Not as new worlds to be conquered, but as a new adventure to be shared. Well, Apollo 11 is the big one. It's the one that uh, many thousands of people in this country have been working towards for, for seven years. The big event that we've all been pointing to for so many years, I guess we all recognize as the one coming up. Apollo 11 is the one we've been practicing for. Well, Apollo 11, our first attempt to land on the lunar surface, is of course uh, the climax of many years of uh, determined effort. To some people it may be a, uh, just another structure, but to me it's a thing of beauty. Uh, the fact still is that there are many parts, and more importantly, there are many people involved. In total, in the last hours of checking out the space vehicle leading up to launch, we have essentially a team of about 1,500 people that are working together, being coordinated, all striving to meet this point in time for successful liftoff. It's like leading a symphony orchestra did spend a fair amount of time early on in the program getting the right people in the right jobs. I have many chores to do and I prepare to, uh, to take an active role in bringing the two vehicles together. The fact that uh, had uh, considerable success in our vehicles is indicative of what we hope will follow. Now, before the flight, we like to get things set as firmly as possible in all our procedures and then attempt to stick with them. But We feel we are in every respect ready to go. If we've done our homework well, everything will come out right. It's one, uh, a, one of the phases of the mission that we have a very high confidence level in. We, it's nothing new. It's things that have been done before and done very well on a number of occasions. And uh, we're quite sure that that, uh, that booster will go. But uh, there is simply the fact left that there are millions of these parts and every single part can, uh, can foul things up. We all have a great deal of confidence down the Saturn V, but it's still a tremendous piece of hardware to be flinging into the, into the air.
Sorry, Doc. The process of crew selection is rather independent of the mission. The crew must be very good observers. Any one of the lot of the crews has been trained to carry out a lunar landing. One reason why test pilots make good astronauts is that they do have a, an ability to observe and report. Neil Armstrong's crew happened to be at the right place at the right time. And they're, contrary to most people's feelings, they're very human beings. Well, as in any flight, uh, the phases that give one most concern are always those which have not been done previously, things that are new. And they have, uh, they have all of the feelings that go with, uh, with any other human in this kind of a circumstance. We'll be picking up where the Apollo 10 flight left off. sign of the, the lunar module will be Eagle. Call sign of the command module will be Columbia. Still looking very good. Velocity down now to 1,200 feet per second. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. Good radar data. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Altitude 4,200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Top alarm. Altitude 1600, 1400 feet, still looking very good. 700 feet, 21 down, 33 degrees. 100 feet, down at 19. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same type, we're go. Altitude, velocity, light, three and a half down, 220 feet. 13 forward. 11 forward, coming down nicely, 200 feet. Four and a half down, five and a half down. 60 seconds. Lights on. Six. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. That's 
feet, down two and a half, picking up some dust. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Good. Okay. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed.
airmen from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, it came in peace for all mankind. Tranquility Base, uh, Houston, guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. Seven, six, five, port stage, engine arm ascent. Yeah, beautiful. Very smooth. Very quiet ride. There's that one crater on there. Thousand feet high, 80 feet uh, per second vertical rise. Eagle Houston, uh, you're looking good at two. Ping, Zags, and Mispin all agree. I'm going right down US-1. Eagle Houston, going right down the track. Everything's great. Horizontal velocity approaching 2,500 feet per second. Roger. Some 120 miles to go until insertion. to carry out this type of a mission. And again, it was a question of time until this would be accomplished. I think it's a technical triumph for this country to have uh, said what it was going to do a number of years ago, and then by golly do it. The relative ease with which we were able to carry out our mission, which of course came after a very efficient and logical sequence of flights, I think that this demonstrated that uh, we were certainly on the right track when we took this commitment to, to go to the moon. I just see it uh, as a beginning, a beginning of a new age. I, I felt that uh, the country would follow through on what it committed to back at the beginning of the space age. In fact, um, I couldn't help but think of the fact that in the uh, first decade, we came through on a whole list of commitments that we made in the first years of the space program. And now every one of those commitments uh, has been met with the landing of the Apollo 11 astronauts on the moon. We provided for the astronauts in this first mission surface experiments that are simple but very important, a seismometer and a laser beam reflector. Uh, the sensitivity of the seismometer was extremely good. Now, the, the real value of a seismic experiment will occur when we can get a, a network of them on the surface. If we're real happy that the instrument is working well and that there are events occurring, whatever they are on the moon, they're occurring so frequently, four or five a day kind of break, that uh, something, something's going on. So, uh, in a gross sense, the moon is not the cold, dead planet that has at least some activity of some kind. The, the moon is different. It's much more active. It's a live planet in a geological sense. The most important thing is to get sufficient data to determine the answers for the future. In other words, do we exploit the moon or forget it? But let's not continue to wonder when we do have the capability and we do have hardware that will give us a reasonable lunar exploration program.
Many of us still can't believe that the goal that we set out to do in 1961 has been achieved. In a very real sense, man has now left this planet for another planet, and we're on our way to exploring the solar system. I think it's been a very difficult thing to, to convince people what man can do. I don't think that anything we've ever done compares to the descent and landing on the moon. Know that man has all of this capability that we thought he had all along. That's a very gratifying thing. I think we were extremely fortunate in the way in which the systems performed and feel very grateful that we uh, landed as we did. I don't think we could call it perfection because I think we learned some things that we have some work to do on. But uh, that, uh, I think the fact that we landed and landed safely made it a perfect mission in my, in my estimation. Some way, when those two Americans stepped on the moon, the people of this world were brought closer together. That it is that spirit, the spirit of Apollo, that America can now help to bring to our relations with other nations. The spirit of Apollo transcends geographical barriers and political differences. It can bring the people of the world together in peace. It seemed to me that it, it was very clear that this was indeed an effort of all mankind and that uh, this, this certainly uh, overshadowed any chauvinistic feeling uh, that, that might have uh, been present. I think it's very difficult to put into words the, the feeling that you can have today when you see these people step out of that spacecraft and uh, walk across that deck. It's the kind of, of goal, the kind of challenge uh, that permits people uh, to give beyond their own, uh, their own uh, capacity. If, and as a consequence, uh, it has drawn out the very best of very many people. That kind of a challenge is the kind of uh, challenge that provides for growth in a country, understanding. I think the scientists who are involved are just having a real picnic with the rock samples, uh, studying them and trying to probe into what are the answers to the dozens of questions that they've had to try to solve from a distance in the past. There's more to the space program than just science. It's really a combination of science, technology, application, and human adventure. And the human adventure element is an important one. It, it's the sort of outgoing type of activity that every people ought to have. So I look upon the space program, the exploration of the oceans and the Earth, and programs of this type as huge scientific and technological exercises that our kind of country must have underway at all times. And as contributing to the, the spiritual drive and spiritual uplift that achieves success in the other problems. <laughs>